Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a fun party invitation that looks like a campy tourism postcard. You can adapt it to any theme, whether it's a Super Bowl party, barbecue, graduation, or in this case, a tropical island party. For your convenience, I provided this Photoshop file in the video's description so you can download it directly and follow along. The size is 1900 by 1250 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. In this file, you'll find all the images we'll be using in it, including these palm leaves. One way you can bring your own images into your document is to click anywhere on it and drag it up onto the tab of your party document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Ultimately, we'll be placing these objects inside our text. Let's group them all into one folder. With the top image active, go to the bottom image and shift click on it. Then press Ctrl or Command plus G. Let's rename it Text Images. Click off the eyeball of the text images to hide them and make the background active. Click on the new layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill the layer with white and since white is our background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. In this layer, we'll create our border. Click on the FX icon and choose Stroke. We'll make the size 80 pixels, the position center, and click on the color box. I'll choose a coral color, 1EFFB2. Go to Fill and reduce it to 0%. This makes the fill transparent but leaves the effects intact. I want to distort the border to have a kind of wave effect. Go to Layer, Smart Objects, and Convert to Smart Object. You know it's a smart object now because the one layer has the Smart Object icon in the lower right corner. Go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. We'll make the number of generators 5, wavelength 99 to 100, amplitude 6 to 7, scale 100 percent, the type is sign, and repeat edge pixels. Let's add a colorful stroke to the edge of the border. Click on the FX icon and choose Stroke. We'll make the size 6 pixels, the position is outside, the blend mode normal, and click on the color box. I'll choose a dark flamingo color, DC4E93. To save some space, let's collapse the effects. We'll rename the layer Border. Call up your Type tool and open your Character panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and choose Character. I'm choosing Impact with 126 point size. In the Paragraphs window, I'm choosing Center Text. Click on the color box and choose white. Type out your text. I already know that I want to increase the size of my second line to 319 points, so I'll highlight it and type in the number. To move the word to the left, click next to the first letter and press Alt or Option and the left arrow key. I'd like to warp the two lines to simulate the shape of a wave, so I'll highlight them and click on the Warp Text icon. I'll choose Flag and warp it 15%. To move it, call up your Move tool and move it. We're ready to choose the color of our text's 3D extrusion. You may want to check out my in-depth tutorial on 3D in CS6 Extended. The direct link to the tutorial is in the video's description. Close the character panels and click on the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Click on the foreground color, and I'm choosing a royal blue, 0012FF. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the layer with the foreground color. Click 3D, New Mesh from Layer, and Postcard. When this window appears, click Yes. Click on the Materials icon, and click on the icon next to the layer, which opens up the Properties panel for Materials. Click on the arrow next to the ball and click on the gear icon. Choose Large List and then New Material. I'll name it Blue Extrusion. Click OK or press Enter or Return. 
Open your Layers panel and trash the extrusion color since we saved it as a new 3D material preset. Go to 3D and New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. As before, when you see this window, click Yes. At the top, you'll see five icons, Rotate, Roll, Drag, Slide, and Scale. Click on the Rotate icon and make sure your Caps Lock is off, otherwise the 3D mode won't work properly. Rotate your text to an angle you like. Play with the 3D modes until you're happy with the size, angle, and position of your 3D text. Click on the Materials icon and choose the Extrusion layer. Double-click on the Materials icon to the left of the layer. This opens its Properties panel. Click on the arrow next to the ball and click on the new preset you saved earlier. Press Enter or Return. Click on the Lights icon and choose Infinite Light. Drag the handle of the large widget down to an angle that illuminates the extrusion. Make sure the front of your text stays illuminated as well. To brighten your extrusion, slide the light intensity to the right. Continue to adjust the angle and intensity of the light until you're happy with the brightness and shadow it casts. To render it, click on the Render icon to the left of the trash can or go to 3D and Render. The rendering itself could take as little as a few minutes or a couple of hours to finish depending on the specs of your computer. When it's done rendering, you can close the 3D properties and open the Layers panel. I'd like to add a color stroke to the inside edge of the letters. Go to Layer, Smart Objects, and Convert to Smart Object. Call up your Magic Wand tool. Make the Tolerance 5, Anti-Alias is checked, but Contiguous is unchecked. Click inside one of the letters, and all the letters will become selected. If you want to see it as a quick mask, press Q. Press Q again to revert it back into a selection. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to cut the selection from the image and copy it to its own layer. Click on the FX icon and choose Stroke. Click on the color box and I'm choosing a turquoise 19F0FD. We'll make the position inside and the size 6 pixels. Let's merge these two layers together Shift click on the text, which highlights both layers. Then, press Ctrl or Command plus E. We're ready to add some more text to our invitation. Call up your Type tool and open your Character panel. This time, I'm choosing Honey Script Lite, which you can download for free at Defont.com. I'll type in 81 points for the size and click on the color box. Choose White and type out your text. To italicize it, highlight the line and click on the italic button. To reposition it, call up your Move tool and move it. Click on the FX icon and choose Stroke. Click on the color box and I'll click on the color of my extrusion. Click OK and change the size to 7 pixels. To make a second line of text, make a copy of it and drag the copy to the lower right. Press T to call back your Type tool and highlight your text. Type out your new line. If you want to increase the size, highlight it and either type out the new size or move the slider to the right. I'd like to make the T and H letters smaller, so I'll highlight just those letters and reduce their size. To move them up on the line, slide the baseline shift to the right and call up my Move tool to reposition the entire line. Then, I'll close my text windows. To consolidate space, let's place our smaller text layers into a folder. Shift click on the bottom text layer and press Ctrl or Command plus G. We'll rename the folder Small Text. Open the Text Images folder and click on the 3D text layer to make it active. Call up your Magic Wand tool and check Contiguous. Now, when you click inside each letter, only the selection of that letter will appear. Click on the layer of your bottom object and click on the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection of the letter. Click back on the 3D text and click your magic wand tool inside the next letter. Click on the next object up and make a layer mask of that letter next to it. Make the 3D text layer active again and continue this process until you have layer masks 
of each of your letters of your second line linked with an object. Click your magic wand on the last letter of your first line to make it into a selection and shift click on the next letter to add its selection. Continue shift clicking on each letter of the first line until all the letters are selected. Click on the image you'd like to place into the first line of your 3D text. Make a layer mask of the selection you just made. Now click off the chain link which allows us to move or effect either layer independently of the other. Repeat clicking off the chain links of the others. Click back on the eyeball of the text images to make them visible including the palm leaves layer. If you want to move or resize any image inside their respective layer masks you can do this since we clicked off their chain links. The last step is to give our invitation a paper-like texture. Collapse your folder and press Control shift alt e or Command shift option e on a Mac to make a composite snapshot. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. The Filter Gallery window will open. Open your texture folder and choose Texturizer. We'll choose Brick. The scaling is 50%, Relief 2, and Light from the top. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.